Today we will be reading Shishi Vilapa Kusumanjali, verse number 11. O Sumuki, fair-faced girl, when will I, even in a dream, be justified in calling my head the highest limb, Utam Anga, of my body? By beautifying it with the glistening, fragrant pollen of your lotus feet. O Sumuki, fair-faced girl, when will I, even in a dream, be justified in calling my head the highest limb, Uttam Anga, of my body? By beautifying it with the glistening, fragrant pollen of your lotus feet. Notes. The more intense Shiragunata's spiritual vision of Radha and Mohana's pastimes was, <clears throat> the more intense the suffering of separation becomes when the vision disappears. And the greater his eagerness in Sadak Avesh becomes to experience Swamini's rarely attained form, qualities, and pastimes again. Sripad Baladev Vidya Bhushana writes in his commentary on the first verse of Srila Goswami's Utkalika Valari. When the devotee cannot experience his beloved deity anymore because his spiritual vision vanishes, his heart melts with eagerness and a great feeling of humility surges up in his heart. Then he cries, incessantly realizing how unqualified he is. Radhe, Radhe. Maybe we can stop here a little bit and try to share something. So from the words, we can see what does it mean, Uttama, Anga, the highest limb of the body. And this is the head. In material world, in material values, and consciousness, we also know that everyone is appreciated the head of person, isn't it? How someone is looking like head is very important. But also head is very important in material life because of intellect and the mind. And in this world, material world, head is very appreciated because of this mind and intellect. And there is saying, I am thinking, so it means I am existing. This is some philosopher I forgot who had, who said that. German devotees, maybe they know that. I am thinking, so it means that I am existing. And everything is in my head. So this is the most important, this is the most important limb of my body because through my head my mind is expressing his existence my intelligence is expressing his existence and my senses also but we can see here the opposite thing in a spiritual consciousness when the person is deeply absorbed in a spiritual identity he is also once that his head became the highest limb of his existence, but from for different reason, very humble reason. My head 
deserve to be the highest limb of my body because Swamini will put her lotus feet on this head. Then my head will have real value. Not because I'm so smart, intelligent, I'm thinking. No, because I put myself in the position of maidservant of my beloved Swami. And when she is satisfied with me, she will put her lotus feet upon my head. And the lack, red lack, red powder from her lotus feet will be on the top of my head. And I will be very proud to be marked like this. <coughs> not because I'm smart, <coughs> not because I'm intelligent. No, because I have a red lack on my head of my beloved Swamini. And I want to know that all Vrindavan knows that, that I am just the maidservant of Shimati Radharani. All Vrindavan, not only inhabitants of Vrindavan, birds of Vrindavan. I want all living beings moving and unmoving to know that I am the maidservant of Shimati Radhika. So we can see here from the words and through the hints of the words of Raguna Das Goswami, the feelings of someone who is deeply diving in his Manjari Swarup. And to that person, when vision appears and then disappears, he is lamenting, he is crying, and his eagerness and humility increases and increases and increases. So, we, sh- we can see here from the commentary of Baba, Rasamai, would you be so kind to read again? When devotee cannot, I cannot find. No. When the devotee cannot experience his beloved deity anymore, because his spiritual vision vanishes, his heart melts with eagerness and a great feeling of humility surges up in his heart. His heart melts with eagerness. Usually we have experience from our bodily consciousness that when we are eager for something, then we are full of passion. But spiritual eagerness, which is coming from the soul, is melting the heart. This is the difference. When person is in the passion and he wants, he eagerly wants something to attain, in reality, his heart is becoming more harder and harder and harder. Under the influence of Rajogun, passion, his heart becomes very, very hard. And if he cannot attain it, he doesn't become humble. He becomes very, very angry and disturbed. So this is the signs of someone whose heart is not melting, but the sign of spiritual person, Sadaka, who knows his identity and who is in loving relationship with his beloved Ishtadev, eagerness to attain him, melting his heart. And because heart is melting, he is humble. It can sound like a paradox, like a contradictory. <clears throat> if we are looking just from a materialistic point of view, but if we are try to tune ourselves on the spiritual level, then we can feel the spiritual eagerness melts the heart and is helping to appear. Humility is helping appear in the heart. And this is the great sign of pure love. So by listening these words of our Rasikacharyas and words of uh, 
Anantana's Babaji commentaries and the commentaries of our Gurudev on his words of Anantadas Babaji, slowly we can come in this flow that heart starts slowly to melt. The more heart will melt, more genuine eagerness will appear. And automatically, genuine humility, natural humility will appear. And Raguna does, like Anitya Siddha, Premika devotee, who is always diving in the waves of Mahabhava, of Shimata Radhika, his heart is naturally already melt, very soft, because it's pure. And his eagerness is also pure, without any selfish motives. When I am eager for something, I have selfish motives. But when the pure devotee is eager to attain something, his motives are pure. Because only one thing he wants to attain, his beloved Swami, and nothing else. This kind of eagerness, like Gurudev is saying, one-pointed eagerness is melting the heart. Not eagerness in many directions. Eagerness in many directions are making the heart harder, like more stone, more like a wood, more like a metal. But when the eagerness, spiritual eagerness, is focused on one goal, lotus feet of Swamini, then heart is starting to melt. And the sign of heart which is melted is a natural humility. So in that mood, in that feelings, Raghunath is speaking these words. When will I, even in a dream, if not directly, at least in a dream, be justified in calling my head the highest limb, beautifying it with the glistening, fragrant pollen of your lotus feet? This prashad of your pollen from your lotus feet I want on my head. This is prashad for my soul. This is prashad for my manjari swarup. So in that mood, Raghunata is lamenting. He is suffering in separation out of intense love, pure love, not ordinary love. Pure love with full melted heart using the humble words to express his feelings. And because of that, Radhika appears in his heart and in his in front of him because of that. Not because he blackmailed her. You have to appear. No. Because of greed and humility. And great, great love. She appears in front of him. And of course, when such kind of vision then suddenly disappears, then all heart of Raghunath is melting more because of suffering. Where are you? When will that day come when I can be with you to serve you, to do something for you? And in that mood, devoting Sadaka Vesh understands one very important point. How unqualified I am. This is not just an empty expression. Oh, I am not qualified, I am not qualified. No. How deeply I am unqualified. Because his heart is melting, his consciousness is changing. His eagerness is more intense and automatically humility is more present in his soft, tender heart. And result in Sadaka Vesh is, I'm so unqualified. I'm completely unqualified. And because I'm unqualified, I completely depend on you. If person thinks that he is qualified, 
he will never put himself in the position of dependence of someone. This is logic. But if someone really has this, uh, has realization, I'm completely unqualified. And at the same time, his heart is soft because of spiritual feelings which make this heart soft. His consciousness is so pure that he can say completely free, I am unqualified. Without any hesitation and feelings of inferiority maybe. And I need help. I depend on the help of my Gurudev. I depend on the help of Acharyas. I depend on the help of other Vaishnavas. Ultimately, I depend, depend on the help of my beloved Swami. And we can relish in these words of Raghunath, we can relish on his dependence, we can relish his eagerness. Someone who is re- not really eager, he is not able to completely depend on the mercy. <laughs> It sounds really amazing because this is description of the emotion of pure devotee whose consciousness is not in the bodily con- conception of life. So I tried to make this introduction. And please, if you want to share something, I don't know, Guru Dev is here, Jainandaji, Sudevi. Very nice, very good one. Yeah. Oh, good. Sri Raghuna Das Goswami is exactly in that situation. In his Swarupa Vesha, he says, You are rarely seen directly. Will I at least in a dream be justified to call my head the highest limb of my body, by wearing the fragrant pollen of your lotus feet on it. Only when it wears this fragrant pollen, my head is justly called my highest limb. (coughs) Baba made a commentary and said, in his Swarupavesh, he is praying like this. So this is interesting, actually. Because a lot of prayers are in Sadakavesh, when devotee is remembering his Swarupavesh. But Baba is saying he is in Swarupavesh, he is praying to Radhika. That at least in my dream. So we can see here how eager is he, that even... When he is conscious about his Swarup, like Tulsi Manjari, he is approaching Radhika, praying to her, please put this fragrant pollen from your lotus feet on my head. And if you don't do it, I will dream, at least to dream. Please give, give me mercy to dream in my Swarup wish. So, He's praying in Sadaka Vejis to see how Swarup Vesh is with Shimati Radhika. I don't know if I explained it. He is praying to see how his Swarup Vesh is with Radhika and saying, even in dreams, I want to be with you and to be marked in my spiritual dreams, in my spiritual body. I want to be marked. Mm. Only when it wears this fragrant pollen, my head is justly called my highest limb. This is for Rupesh. This is for Rupesh. He is proud and he wants to be proud. When Radhika puts his lotus feet and the powder from lotus feet on his Swarupvesh head, not the head on Raghunath, on Radha Kunda, but on the head of Tulsi, he wants 
to proudly wear this mark, reddish mark, and go all around Vrindavan, proudly showing that she is the mis- uh, maidservant of Shemati Radhika. This is the way how I understand. Maybe I'm completely wrong. Please go to the real pride that I am Swami Maitreya and to try to be fixed ourselves that I am much myself. If some diversion comes again and again, we have to bring ourselves in this one. And Baba say, when we will dream it and think it, means whole day I am thinking this, then dream is coming. And when dream is coming, then my behavior becomes real. I cannot dream without holding where my mind is going. I do the dream also same, but my mind whole day working. That is dream come. So bhajan and the dream is also bhajan. And when they are doing bhajan also, they do always keep their mind one point in the other. So the I bow very nice. So it means that actually when these kind of dreams are coming to the person, to the devotee, in the dream he sees himself like a manjari, not in Sadakavesh. <laughs> And this dream is describing Raghunath here. Even yeah. in my dream, like a Tulsi, I want to be marked. If not directly, this is the little playfulness of the words. But he is saying, even in my dream, like Tulsi Manjari, I want to be marked with your pollen from your lotus feet. If you don't want to give me direct darshan <laughs> to be... And it- Dream not coming. Yeah. Means I am very far from that. Yeah. Something else is coming. What I am thinking. How intensely he desires this. Although he understands that he desires something which is hard to attain, he cannot give up hoping. Chaitanya Charitamrita. Although I see that I am unworthy, my mind is still greedy for your attributes. Although he sees that he is completely unqualified, his mind is still illuminated by the hope for getting their sweet mercy. This is one point. Sign of someone who is one point. Why? Because he has true, real seeing. Real seeing means real seeing of my real identity, but also it means real seeing how unqualified I am. This is also the part of real seeing. I don't have real seeing because I don't understand how I am unqualified. But someone who attained perfection in his Sadakavesh has also real seeing of his Sadaka position. Uh, some sounds, noise is coming. 
I don't know from where. Okay. So, in this part of commentary, it's very important to understand what does it mean real seeing. It's on many levels our real seeing are happening. Spiritual level. And when, sorry, when the person is really diving in his spiritual identity, then he can see his spiritual identity, but also he can see very clearly his sadaka identity. And automatically natural humility appears, and he said, I am completely unworthy, unqualified. But his mind and heart are never give up a hope. This is the difference between material person and spiritual person. When material person sees himself, how unqualified he is, he is going down in de- depression. He is losing the faith. He is losing the hope. But when real, genuine, spiritual person sees his unqualifications, unworthiness, he is not losing the hope. Actually, his hope is increasing. Increasing together because it is nourished with the greed to attain the goal. Hope is nourished with the greed to attain the spiritual goal. And his faith is behind that hope. Strong faith. Firm faith, we say. Although, in the same time, he thinks I'm unqualified. And because of that, I'm unqualified. I'm not losing the hope. Because my Swamini, my beloved Gurudev, is all merciful. But I need to be sincere, honest, in the heart, and fixed completely what I really want. Otherwise, hope cannot be so strong. And when some waves of disturbance are coming, then the faith is just disappearing, also together with the hope. And this is the sign of strong material body consciousness that I am this body. For me personally, this is very important instruction of Baba. Hope against hope. This is real hope. <laughs> that. Hope for so nice, hope. Ranga Sunda. So nice. You are here. You give this oh. study. You give this example for hope and different meanings. So beautiful. I just meditate on this pollen. Pollen. There is many times we we uh, listen from the dust of the lotus feet of Dwamini. But here it's this Sunniti Gesuma. Uh, there is described the pollen, fragrant pollen. So what is the meaning of fragrant pollen? This is a difference to the dust. There are a deep meaning I can feel behind this pollen. So the bees, the bees, they are collecting honey from from the uh, flowers, right? And um, different things they're collecting. They built their house with uh, some, like, you can make uh, candles from this, no? right? But the pollen, actually, they are from this uh, collecting the honey. This pollen from the flowers are hanging on the legs of the bees. This pollen has different colors, shiny yellow, Reddish, it is uh, depend on the flowers. These bees are flying through. So for me, this example of the pollen of the lotus feet of our Swamini is a very deep meaning. And our Raguna is is searching also Muki. When will I even in a dream? 
be justified in calling my head the highest limb of my body by beautifying it with the glistening fragrant pollen of your lotus feet. So Gurudev, maybe you can explain much better this meaning of this pollen of the lotus feet of Swamini. You said this my God. <laughs> Only in three can see this Manjari, Manjari, in Hindi they say Manjari. Manjari, the flower. Many, one tree has many, many birds come. That's in Hindi Manjari. Yeah. That Manjari are they can see. And the bee are there from the flower to take that. So it's a very divine meaning. But this is good and that good and is coming by the mercy of Radhika. This, this drop of love giving in our life to understand the Manjari power. This Manjari can only give the survive with this sequence survive by the grace of Radhika. The total feet of Radhika, when her opponent can touch to the Manjari, that is magic. Hmm. She makes the Manjari Gurudev, right? Without that mark, we cannot stay in that tree before that. Because it's not easy without her center of blood. Many disturbances, material all can make unbalanced blood. Many, many bows coming inside. At one point, take this and more deep to the big What can I say if you don't put the words from your heart in our mouth? Actually, this pollen is not only the pollen like Gorasundar said, from the plants, from the flowers. In this pollen, many flavors are present. A guru, musk, it's written, vermilion. Aguru is the red <laughs> Gurudev, can you take a uh, mic closer to you? Because it's really. Aguru, Aguru is the Radharani, good Aguru. Oh, wow. And mask is Krishna remembrance, black. And mm -hmm. third one? Vermilion, reddish. There is. Is a passion of meeting of both of them. All these substances are present in the pollen. Yeah. So and, yeah. When they, and when they touch Swamini or Radhika or all together, or they enter in the no nostrils or yeah. in the eyes <laughs> or in the ears, then it's explosion of relishing. Madhurya, Parakya Bhava, mood, is exploding in the heart of devotee, but also in the heart of Swamini and her Mohan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gora Sundara, he 
just raised us out of this universe. <laughs> wow, he's a very elegant. Yeah, I like him so much. <laughs> While he is reading, some pollen coming to us. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> the words of Mahajanas, we can feel the pollen on our head because their words are pollen for our heart and head. There is no That's other way. And this is Swamini's blessing. And her manjaris. Hmm. Yes. So this is great inspiration that we can only follow them, not our own concoctions. Why? Everything is here, clear. Radha. And Gurudev, what is the secret of fragrant pollen? What is the meaning of fragrant here? Flavor. We are living in positive flavor or negative flavor. Ah. We live in stinky flavor. And no, I don't love it. There are two types of flavor we live. Yes. Now I have to dri- drive taxi from for devotees. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. Not there. <laughs> so, so fragrant with the flavor, right? I think like flavor. We have to live all this. You see, rather more flavor we receive morning to increase to live in that flavor of Radharani. This is offered by Radharani for Krishna Mohan that you also live in this place. Sanitiji, can you put mute? Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Go on. So although he sees that he is completely unqualified, his mind is still illuminated by the hope, forgetting their sweet mercy. Srila Rupa Goswami wrote, O King and Queen of Vrindavana, although the greatest souls were not able to get your direct audience for even a moment, this fallen soul desires it, swallowing his fear and his shame. But what is my fault in this? Who will not be intoxicated by the ever-fresh sweetness of your qualities? Mm-hmm. That was Utkali Kavar. So this is not my fault. You completely intoxicated me. And I'm not responsible in this situation of intoxication. I'm not responsible for my thoughts, feelings, actions. So I swallow my prowl. I don't want to be a sober. Because if I am sober, I will be the victim of my feeling of shame. <coughs> But if I'm intoxicated, I understand how unqualified I am. But my dear, you intoxicated me. You are the source of this nectarian intoxication which infused my heart. You are the source. And I'm swallowing my fear and shame because I'm unqualified. This is the words of someone who has genuine greed and humility. So we should try to feel these words, to put these feelings in the heart and allow them to bloom in our heart. Because by allowing them to bloom, accepting them to, to bloom in our heart, our heart will melt. There is no other way. Pollen from their words, fragrant pollen from their words will melt my heart. 
and increase my eagerness and establish natural humility. Because I am intoxicated. I want to be intoxicated. Because no one who is not intoxicated can be close to you, my dear Rade. Only persons who are completely intoxicated can live with you, can stay with you, can follow you like a shadows. Someone who is sober, there is no place for him. Sri Raghunata's heart is greatly agitated when he relishes Sri Mati's sweetness and beauty and the sweetness of her attributes and pastimes. Just as Agastya Muni once drank the water of all the seven oceans, Raghunata's eagerness now also drinks the ocean of his patience, and it dries it up completely. The expertise of the Acharyas Bhajana can be seen in the sweetness of their activities. When a person on a devotional path is attacked by Maya, he will commit offenses and he won't be able to relish the joy of devotion. How sweet are the teachings of the Acharyas. When Prashad is taken, they say, Beware, O saints, do not become immersed in enjoying the tongue now. Remember that you are here only to taste the remnants of the Lord's foodstuffs. In this way, all physical activities like sleeping and eating should be performed as items of bhajan. When these things are seen as worldly activities, the devotee is deceived. <laughs> In this verse, Shiragunata prays to the lotus feet of Shimati in his Svarupavish. How sweetly he addresses her with Ai Sumuki. How many sweet lilas he remembers when he sees her beautiful face. Krishna is the amorous Dira Lalita hero, who is carefree and controlled by his sweetheart. He is not encum- encumbered with maintaining the world. Uh, Chaitanya Charita Amrita. Ratri Dina Kunja Krita Kore Radha Sangi. Kishora Vayasa Sapala. Day and night, he plays with Radha in the kunjas of Vrindavana. In this way, he makes his adolescence successful with his love sports. Just like Krishna, Radharani is also always absorbed in pastimes. And when Krishna sees her beautiful face, Sumuki, which is filled with the rasa of Mahabhav, he also becomes absorbed in erotic pastimes, forgetting everything else. Radhe, please read this sentence again. Just like Krishna, Radharani, is also always absorbed in pastimes. And when Krishna sees her beautiful face, Sumuki, which is filled with the rasa of Mahabhav, he also becomes absorbed in erotic pastimes, 
Forgetting everything else. Forgetting everything else. This is the power of amorous pastimes. And Krishna, by his own example, is showing us that when devotee is absorbed, completely absorbed, in amorous pastimes of Radha and Krishna, he is forgetting everything else. So this is the way how we can forget everything else if we really want to forget everything else. To be absorbed in these loving, amorous pastimes between Radha and Mohan. Because they are absorbed in their own loving, amorous pastimes. And they are intoxicated with their amorous pastimes. So devotees who are deeply absorbed in their amorous pastimes are also intoxicating. And they are forgetting, like intoxicated persons, everything else. So our acharyas, in many, many of them, and in many places, are repeating again. If you want to be free from your karma, from your lusty desires, then meditate on loving, sweet, amorous pastimes of Radha and Mohan. But and then your your karma, your lust will slowly but surely disappear from your heart, and your heart will be ready to be melted. Because unless the material lust is present in the heart, heart cannot be melted. This lust, it's not only sexual lust. It's lust to relish this world with all my senses. Makes heart hard. But when the loving pastimes starts to be infused in the consciousness, in the mind, chitta of the devotee, then this material karma slowly becomes prema. And I remember Vishwana Chakra Thakur somewhere a long time ago, I read it, but it makes a point to me. If someone doesn't have a faith in this, it means that he doesn't have any faith in a holy name. It was his conclusion, which really entered in my heart. So in one sense, devotee is putting all his attention, all his desires to be absorbed in loving, amorous pastimes between Radha and Mohan. And in the same time, he's aware about his unqualifications. Then the process of sadhana, raga nuga bhakti, is properly working. By melting the heart, increasing the eagerness, and also humility. Shri Radhe. Oh, Gopinaji. Ranga bolite have My God. You're just taking us so deep, Guranga. And I just wanted to, if, if I may add something small to this intoxication you were telling us, how intoxicated we can actually become when we in properly meditate on the amorous pastimes of Radha Mohan in the Nikunja. So the other day we were sharing with Gurudev about this sweet pastime of honey wine, when Radha and Mohan, after the love play, are served this honey wine, which is made out of flowers, different ingredients. It has the aroma of Vrindavan's forest, which means also the pollens are in, in there. We were hearing this so beautifully about the pollen, which enters our nostrils. So then Gurudev was saying that of course, we know that when uh, Mohan passes the honey wine to Radharani, how does he pass it on with the cup of his lips, right? And they taste the honey wine, but also the manjaris also get to taste the honey wine. So like Radha and Mohan get intoxicated, the manjaris also get intoxicated. And what happens is that 
Radha and Mohan start talking like very foolish things to each other in their ears, whispering, non-coherent. And the Manjaris are witnessing this all, Gurudev. So when, when can we hear this talk, Gurudev? Why we're not hearing it? We're doing everything. We're doing our bhajan. We're eating prasad. We're trying to follow. But we still cannot hear them talking in the Nikunda. Are we too less intoxicated? We need more. <laughs> To develop that greed, greedy, more and more greed. Why do I listen to it? When somebody is talking, any gossip, my ear immediately goes there. But yeah. when they are speaking, material greed is still there. <laughs> that greed has less. That greed has to be improved. <laughs> I mean, we do also with the one who We have needed, huh? Yeah. Uh, Aparad, you want for the greed is there. Some air is going there. When the greed is more and more will be here, my air will be always there. So only we have to develop the greed for this side, huh? So only for living in that service of our song. We have to drink more with the ears? More. Drinking from the ears and talking from the eyes. <coughs> drinking from the eyes and chanting. Talking means chanting and talking from the eyes. Making heart. Their exclusively beautiful faces that carry a golden and blue luster are beautified by ornaments of ecstatic love. Their complexions are golden and blue, and their garments are blue and golden, showing that they carry love for each other in their hearts, and that they are yearning for each other. Can you repeat this again? Because it's very clearly explained what does it mean, pure love, which is exchanged between Radha and Mohan. They are not ordinary boy and girls with their sensual desires. Here in Prema Bhakti Chandrika, Narutan Das Thakur explaining who are really they, how they love each other and what they are ready to do for each other. And this is the symptom of pure love, in, which is the, described in these words. Between Radha and her beloved. Their exclusively beautiful faces that carry a golden and blue luster are beautified by ornaments of ecstatic love. Their complexions are golden and blue and their garments are blue and golden showing that they carry love for each other in their hearts and that they are yearning for each other. With his mother, he is a child. With Putana, he is omniscient. And with Radharani, he is just ignorant, mugta or, or enchanted. When he lies in her arms, in the kunja, at daybreak, his godhood is swallowed by Radharani's Mahabha. My dear, can you read this sentence one more time? Yes. When he lies in her arms, in the kunja, 
at daybreak. His godhood is swallowed by Radharani's Mahabhav. The parrots sing in the trees and he doesn't even remember that his mother may be wondering where he is. He does not sleep. This is called Rasa Lasa, divine romantic fatigue. His absolute knowledge is then pervaded by Radhika's absolute love. Although he is the supreme personality of Godhead, eternal and imperishable, self-satisfied, and so on, he will fearfully return to his own home when the old she-monkey Kakati repeatedly announces Jatila's coming to the Kunja at daybreak. Krishna takes half a step towards home. Then he turns back to kiss Radharani once again. Streams of tears glide from their eyes as they look at each other's faces. The Sakis are crying. They can also not move. Radha and Mohana fearfully look at each other with anxious eyes while their clothes and their flower garlands fall off. After taking off their ankle bells and other ornaments, they both anxiously go their own ways, constantly looking back at each other until they cannot see each other anymore, drenching their clothes with their tears. Which other lady love can create such a thirst in Sri Krishna, the transcendental Cupid of Vrindavana. This cannot be understood without having devotional experience, being in a mundane consciousness. Shishuka Deva says, Beware, O devotees. He who maddens the whole world is not the ordinary Cupid. He is the spiritual enchanter of Cupid, the Kama Gana Viraha, the embodiment of intense desire. In the Tosani commentary on Sh- We can't hear you, Rasamayi. Something happened. <laughs> Maybe this is the sign to stop, because it's... <laughs> 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 Thank you, Rasamay. It's not your fault at all. <laughs> this is arrangement for all of us. <laughs> Radhe Radhe Gurudev. Thank you very much. We embrace you. I embrace you so much. Radhe Radhe Gurudev. Thank you, Sunitaji. Thank you, everyone who participated in any way. Radhe Radhe Dears. Radhe. Already over? Not now. <laughs> 9.30? Yes. Japanese time. Maybe, maybe it's time for Gora Chandra to share something. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> My dear. There's so many things coming, but... I don't want to interrupt always. So, but now I have to go a little back in the lecture. When Raghunath is so desperate that he feels so humble and that he feels so unqualified. And I want to say how Radharani feels towards the Manjari. I think she, she's thinking My dear Manjari, I want to make you qualified. I need, there will be a time when I need your help. Sometimes I 
Radha Rani going through through a very difficult time. I also become desperate. I also experience deep, deep separation from my Radha, from my Mohan. And in that moment, I will need your help. When I am fainting out of desperation, when I don't know anymore what to do, in that moment, I need your help. You cannot faint in this situation. I want to take you near. I want that you can help me to meet him. And therefore, you must learn to tolerate these intense feelings. So I want to teach you that. So sometimes I'm hiding from you. I need to make you cry. I need to make you completely pure. Otherwise, you cannot be useful when I'm going through difficulties. <laughs> But I want you come near to me. I need your help. So... And qualification, to have no qualification means actually that I admit that love has its own rules. There is no me mechanism like I do this and I achieve that. There is no ritual that I can follow and then I will get the result. Love is completely free. Bhakti is totally independent. So all my qualifications that I use in the material world to attain my goal, my education, my knowledge, my manipulating tendencies, they are all useless in the realm of love. <laughs> so to be totally unqualified from the material perspective, makes us qualified to enter into the kingdom of love. Because there's only one thing required that I really wanted and that I am able to surrender for whatever outcome. She is appearing or not appearing, but now I'm already naked. Like when Krishna is stealing the clothes of the gopis, all coverings has to be removed. I have to be completely naked, without any protection anymore, without any weapons, with a complete open heart, only raising the arms <laughs> and say, here I am. And spontaneous love means also it, appears, the Leela appears by its own desire. Radharani always decides when she wants to show herself and when she wants to remove uh, herself from the vision of the devotee. But always like a mama giving some nectar, teach us how to walk and then again step little back that we can walk little alone. But mother always near to catch the baby if it wants to fall. So that we have to experience this mood of separation actually is a, is a teaching for us that we can be helpful in the future when Radharani is in separation from Mohan. Because she can faint, but the Manjari cannot. Radharani, maybe she don't know what to do anymore, but Manjari has to know in this situation what to do. So we have to be more tolerant, more capable to experience all these intense feelings of Radharani, more than she herself can handle. <laughs> Somehow, that I wanted to share. Radhe, Radhe, thank you. Gorachandra, for your sharing. Now I have to leave, and if someone wants to share, please do it. But I have to leave, sorry. Radhe, Radhe. Radhe, Radhe. Bye -bye. Jai Shri Radhe. If you are interested, if you would like to hear what Narayan Maharaj is saying on that, what Gorachandra just invoked, 
he is writing in Sri Brahma Samputta some very nice explanation. Because what Gaurachandra just said even counts for Krishna himself. It's not that only we are unqualified, even he is unqualified to get Radharani's love, to go into Brahma. Even Krishna is unqualified if he still is God. <laughs> so please hear what Narayan Maharaj is writing. Brahma can only be attained when one is completely independent and free from care and when one completely relinquished the bride born of one's occupational duty. All forms of Bhagavan, starting with the Guna avatars and Purusha avatars up to Srinarayan, the lord of the spiritual sky, are supremely independent, but they engage in activities such as creating material universes, delivering devotees, and establishing religion, and they all carry the identity of being the Supreme Lord. They are all not able to simply love someone because they cannot be free from any anxiety of these responsibilities, even for a moment. Nor can they give up their opulence. I found this is really some very opulent uh, statement here. <laughs> Narayan Maharaj is bringing us in another world. So not even we are unqualified. Even the goddesses are completely unqualified to go into Brahma. They cannot love because they are into duties. So that means for us, if we cannot give up everything, completely independent and free from care, if we cannot give up the bride born of our occupational duties, it will be not possible for us to go into Brahma. Jai Shri Radhe. Thank you very much. Now we can only ask Jayananda for one comment. <laughs> Others all disappear already. Uh, no, actually, everybody so nice. And uh, so actually, this prema and uh, this humbleness and unqualification, I feel go parallel. Everybody saying true. And also same times, someone who has real prema, that person feel, oh, I don't have any prema. I don't have yeah. any question. This kind of thing is very, in this material world, the complete opposite thing I feel. So therefore, this Ragnadas's feeling is really someone who has prema. So, which I don't have any qualification, honestly. So, this humbleness and this qualification, that person has real prema. And this connect with Mahaprabhu's Shikshashtaka, especially like a Tunada Pibas. So, Gurudev used to say, we have to be very tolerant and we have to be, let me say, we should have very always humble. So that's I I wish to learn. I wish to have more love. So I'm thank you for for everybody because I could not <laughs> have any comment <laughs> today. Thank you very much, Gora Chandra and Gora Bani and Goranga Sundara for everybody. Goranga Sundara lecture always very difficult. 
to share because everyone only want to relish. <laughs> Nobody want to talk. Everyone only want to listen. That's true. I agree completely. <laughs> Yesterday we were talking about proper listening. No? What is the importance of Shravana? Not with the mind, but with the feelings. Like Jiva Goswami saying, the right way of the devotion is that we get taste for hearing and chanting. Because by proper hearing, the feelings are coming. The mercy is coming by through the ears. And listen from Rasika Vaishnava is so rare. So if we get chance to listen, then we should listen. Guru Dev also say our mistake is we don't want to listen. We want to talk. <laughs> like so with Goranga Sunda lecture is always so relishable. I really enjoy listening. And I also feel many, many feelings and thoughts coming to me. I would like to share. But I'm a little hesitate. I don't want to interrupt. And I also want to listen only. So, Me too. <laughs> Me too. And then the next beautiful thing coming. And then the next. And then I share something that happened in the beginning of the lecture. <laughs> Very beautiful. Great soul, Goranga Sunda. Really. Okay. We are fortunate, actually. I feel we are fortunate to have such a good brother and such a good sisters. Amazing. Okay. Ravi, thank you, everyone. Rati, Rati, Rati.